Hey guys, Jim here. Welcome into a new special edition of Guest Blade. What we're going to be doing today is stepping into the realm of excellence. Now, you guys know that I'm a big, big fan of Todd Begg and his work, and I've showcased a lot of his knives on my channel right here. However, what I've never been able to do is showcase a full custom Todd Begg knife before. And the reason why this is such a, uh, a special day is this particular knife was donated to me for Guest Blade uh, by a young man named Alec. Now, I'm not going to give his last name because he is under 18 years old. Um, as a matter of fact, he's way under 18 years old. This knife stands in the collection of a 13-year-old young man. Now, before you go crazy and start going, life's unfair. My parents never bought me a five or six thousand dollar knife when I was 13. He's spoiled. He doesn't deserve it. These are the kind of comments that we've seen on Alex's page when he's posted this knife and a few others. The fact of the matter is, he's a very, very mature young man. I've had a chance to uh, communicate with him back and forth quite a few times, uh, obviously because he was. Uh, offering to send me this knife and I was really struck by how mature he seemed for his age again he's 13 I don't expect him to sound like he's you know a 40 year old man uh, but he's very very mature for his age and he as well as his father and family are very 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 close friends of the Beggs so it stands to reason that he's able to get his hands on something this rare and special. Now, we talked about bodegas a lot in the past. You've seen my multiple videos on my beloved Big Red. I do not have Big Red here today to put side by side with this, unfortunately, uh, because Todd and Mark do have it in their shop. So stay tuned for a future special episode to see what we've done to Big Red. But what I do have for comparison here is I have the Tad Gear field grade bodega that we'll put up next to it and of course I have the new mini bodega which I have not done a video on yet so we're gonna do some side-by-side -side comparisons there and talk about the level of craftsmanship that goes into each level of their knife making now before I get too crazy about that let's look at the beauty of Alex knife <clears throat> this thing is nothing short of magnificent and what I want you to do after we get finished with this preliminary look I right now I want you to soak in the beauty of the materials the polishing the beautiful Timascus completely flush inlays and of course that very sexy beautifully etched dam of steel blade <clears throat> now what I want you to do is I want you to put all that to the side Forget that we're seeing Damasteel. Forget that we're seeing Timascus. One of the points that I made in one of my Instagram posts about this knife is the fact that most any knife maker can take dazzling materials like Timascus and Damasteel and create a beautiful looking, very glamorous looking shiny knife. The difference here is Todd could have made this knife with carbon fiber and N690 and it would have been equally as impressive and breathtaking and that my friends is the difference between the level of work that Todd does and what so many other makers are doing because he's not afraid to put in the time this particular knife right here has two full weeks of Todd's personal attention this is not a mid-tech knife this is not a customized mid-tech knife this is one of only six existing full custom bodegas in the entire world. This is number six. Every bodega you've ever seen has been a mid-tech or has been a field grade. Now, the differences are with the mid-tech, you're not getting Todd's handwork in it. You are getting his amazing uh, shop employees that put in a lot of time, and these are all guys that were trained by Todd to do the work that they do, and they do it phenomenally well. As a matter of fact, I just got my new Glimpse 5.5, and when you look at the detail work that's been done in this, especially for a mid-tech, it is breathtaking. I put this above 
so many customs that are in my collection, it's ridiculous. Now granted, their mid-techs are the most expensive mid-techs on the planet. This is a $1,500 mid-tech. Mid-techs generally run $450 to $800 bucks in the general realm. When you get into a Todd Begg mid-tech, you're paying for a lot more work. You're paying for a lot more handwork. You're paying for a lot of customization and a lot of detail. Even in their field grade series, now this is a Tad Gear edition, so it's a little bit more than the standard regular field grade bodega. This is still an exceptional little machine in your hands. The action is fantastic, very smooth, very fast. Great detail work throughout. It's got the sub frame lock that we've uh, come to know very well from the bodegas. Just a little bit lighter weight because it's predominantly done in G10 instead of all titanium. So you go from the mid-tech that we're used to seeing and now they're introducing their line of Steelcraft knives which are actually Todd's designs but they're entirely made as production knives with no limitation as far as how many are being made and they're made by David Dang of Riat Knives in China. So when you look at a titanium bodega as they originally came out, 850, 950, 1050 for the different levels, then you have the field grade which originally launched at 550, I think there's 750 now, the tad gear is a little bit more, or you could get into the Steelcraft production, and again this is the mini bodega, it's quite a bit smaller as you can see, and the user in the $400 range. So how do you make that jump and justify to yourself going from let's say a thousand or twelve hundred dollar bodega to five or six thousand dollars? Well I'll tell you right now that the detent on this knife being set by Todd this is flat out the most amazing detent I have felt in any knife I have ever owned or ever guest bladed. Yes, that includes R.J. Martins, that includes Pohan Lu, that includes David Clark, that includes uh, Jim Burke. All of these amazing knives that I've been able to bring out to you over the past three or four years. This is the king of detents. It is frankly astounding. When I first picked it up, the nervousness, of course, uh, of unwrapping this and going, don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it. And I get a nice firm grip on it, and I go to hit it, and I'm like, oh, wait, what's going on here? Really hard detent as compared to any of the other bodegas. So I'm like, okay, hold on to it a little bit tighter. And it just whips out. But it still has this silky smoothness that as good as my glimpse is, as good as my bodegas have been, I've owned three bodegas, well actually now four, this takes the cake. So you've got the ceramic IKBS, ceramic detent, he's put the ceramic bowl to signify that in the custom made Timascus clip. And it feels like no other knife I've ever handled. When you look at this knife, if you were to take this knife apart, every piece on the inside of this knife is finished equally as well as it is on the outside. Now realize he has taken this and fully mirror polished all of the titanium. He's done a completely flush inlay on the Timascus. The pivot island, you can't feel it. It's just, it's like it's not even there. The same level of attention and detail is on everything. It's on the lock bar. Look at this. Look at the jeweling he's done in the lock bar relief cut. That doesn't exist on any of the mid-tech knives. Here, I'll show you the glimpse again. On a $1,500 knife, there are still things that cannot be done. Because you have to pay for that labor. Little details like this. Polishing inside of this flute. The beautiful finishing, and it's really hard to get it to show up here. 
on the inside of the frames, the inside of the back spacer with the cracked ice finish. Beautiful work all the way around. Notice how the cracked ice ends right here into this crosshatch pattern and picks up again here at the end of the backspacer. Perfect lockup as you would expect. Not a bit of stick to it. Perfect etch on that Damasteel. There's the signature flute with his alternating holes, which we've seen a lot of copycats doing over the past couple of years. And that is one of Todd's major signatures right there. When you see that copied by Kaiser or any of the other knockoff artists that are out there, realize that that's where they got it from. They got that from Todd Begg. And they also do his split handle design fairly often in the knockoffs as well, which is something we see in their um, Steelcraft Quaken, that split handle design with the flute going down the middle. That's been knocked off a lot as well. I'll be honest with you, this is a grail, a, a true grail of grails. And grail is a word that we see overused and abused and used inappropriately all the time in knife collecting. I've seen guys refer to certain zero tolerance knives as grails. And I don't mean like, you know, the triple seven. I mean like just a regular run of the mill, everyday available ZT. Here's why this is a grail, and it fits the true definition. It is almost completely impossible to ever imagine that you or I will ever own this knife. It's one of six in existence. It was given as a birthday gift to Alec, so it's unlikely that he will ever sell it. And it's unlikely that many people watching this video could ever afford to spend five or $6,000 on a knife. And if you can, then it's, can you justify spending five or $6,000 on that knife? And that's what makes it a grail. It is unattainable on multiple levels. I have waited years to be able to come out here and show you a full custom Todd bag. Todd was kind enough to put me on his list years ago. And that was back when his list was, I think, five years long. It's over six years long now. And I don't know when that time is going to come. Uh, he's been very generous to say, whenever you're ready, give me an indication and we'll see where you're at. And that's great. But I'll be honest with you. Over the past year, my priorities have shifted a little bit. I still buy expensive knives. I still have nice stuff made for me. But I'm not out there. I mean, there's been times I've spent 10, 11 grand in a month on knives. I don't do that anymore because I've got other responsibilities and especially ever, ever since uh, I moved to Texas and got all the businesses going here, it's just something that I don't do as often. So for me to drop five or six grand on a knife, it's going to be a while. But I know when I've done that, I've got something that I can appreciate for the rest of my life. But here's the wonderful thing about that. It doesn't take away from my admiration and absolute love of the other bag knives that I currently own. I, I don't sell my bags. I keep my bags forever. I've bought a couple bodegas on the secondary market, and they didn't live up to Big Red, so I got rid of them. But Big Red stays forever. My glimpse stays forever. All the stuff that I have, even my little, little mini glimpse friction folder. You know, this was a one-of-a-kind, the only one they ever did like this. And Mark was kind enough to gift this to me a couple of years ago. And it's something that I carry all the time. I'll never get rid of it. And even if I never carried it again, I'd never get rid of it. Because there's something special about every single knife they make. So just because you see a full custom sitting here, with accents and touches and hand finishing that could never exist on the mid-tech. It doesn't take away from how great the mid-tech is. 
because they're so different in their function, in their fit, finish, and feel. Yet you can absolutely feel and see the familial resemblance. You know you're still holding a quality knife when you've got even just this feel grade in your hands. You know it, you feel it. Does it feel like a $5,000 knife? Oh, no. And I have knives in my collection that come close to that cost that don't have the level of refinement. And that's, that's the difference here. It's not the materials. It's the level of refinement, the fit and finish that has gone into it. Now, you guys know I love Timascus. I love Damasteel. This knife for me, however, is a little bit over the top. Being fully mirror polished, it's a fingerprint magnet. I'm going to wipe it down here in a moment before I give you more close-ups on it. It's a little bit bright, and I love bright, colorful things, but it's a little much for me. When my time comes, it's going to be different materials. But I know, by holding this in my hands right now, I know what to expect. I know how it's going to feel. I know how it's going to function. I know that glass smoothness that I'm going to feel in that action. I know the amount of time and hard work that Todd is going to put into this knife. There are a lot of great makers out there that have made a great name for themselves in the past five or ten years. And they may be able to auction a knife in the three, four, five thousand dollar range. You may see their knives going on the secondary market in the three, four, five thousand dollar range. But I can assure you that the majority of those are not worth anywhere near that. Because you'll be able to pick up that knife and find little things here and there. This knife is absolute perfection. I'm going to move my light here just a little bit so I can get the right angle. And I want you to really look at this. Whether you're listening to what I'm saying or not, I want you to really look at this knife up close and tell me, let me wipe this down really quick, and tell me that you see a single flaw or any one thing that's out of place. I can't tell you how many truly amazing custom knives I have handled, whether I've owned it or just saw it at a show or did a guest, guest blade or whatever, that you could still find a little something here or there that kept you from being able to say it was 100% flawless. This knife is completely without flaw. The way each of the inlays are done, the pivot island, the inlay into the frame, there is no gap between the materials. It is perfectly fitted. There is no jump from one material to the other. It is almost glass-like smooth. Even the polishing of the heads of the hardware before he anodized them. Everything is perfect. And there are, uh, there are quite a few makers who achieve this level, but they sell at this price point. You know, this is when you're looking at, get that rag out of the way, when you're looking at guys like Michael Walker, Ron Best, Stan Wilson, that level of knife making where you're never going to get on their books and if you do this is the price range you have to spend because you can't expect a knife maker to sit down and again take out the dollar amount for these materials yeah there's at least five hundred dollars worth of Timascus here 
very expensive dam of steel but take all that out you're not going to get a knife maker to sit down on a thousand or fifteen hundred dollar knife and put two full weeks of work into hand fitting hand finishing doing all of this extreme labor for that price it can't be done and even when you factor it in, if you looked at what Todd made, by break it down by the hour, like he works at McDonald's, he's being paid hourly. It ain't like he's getting rich off of it. He does it for the love and for the passion. I mean, think about it. You see one or two custom field marshals come out of his shop. You see four or five custom Quakens come out of his shop and now six custom bodegas in years because it takes so much time the knives that he had to present to the guild for his induction I don't even want to think about how long it took him to make those you're paying for time there's a big difference between standard knife making and true amazing hand finished work like this and knowing that knives like this exist is exactly why I do put Todd up on a pedestal I have no problem saying that I am a huge fan of his work I'm very 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 fortunate to call both Todd and Mark good friends of mine I love every time I get a chance to see them and hang out and know that if I have a ridiculous crazy knife question I can shoot Todd a text and he always gets back to me and he's always so patient he doesn't it's not just quick you know two or three word responses he'll sit down and take his time and go it's this it's this it's done this way and this is why we do it he's generous with his time and if you ever meet him at a show you'll see the exact same thing this is a guy that just loves knife making and the reason why he and Alec have the bond that they do is because Todd sees a little bit of himself in Alec. Because if you go back to a 13-year-old Todd Begg, this is a time, you know, we're all fairly, right around the same age, actually, when you would look at the walls of my teenage bedroom, and it's girls in bikinis, and it's Lamborghini Countach and Porsche 1911 posters. He had pictures of knives up on his wall. He was idolizing Gil Hibben like we were idolizing musicians. That rock and roll star in his life was somebody that did work like this. And when he was finally able to do it himself, he perfected it. And he brings that passion into every knife he touches. And he brings that passion into every conversation he has with other people that love knives. I've seen him sit down with people and critique their knives. Young knife makers will come up, even experienced knife makers will come up to him and go, can you take a look at my knife and critique it? But I tell you right now, if you're one of those people and you said, oh man, I'm going to go to the Blade Show next year. I'm going to bring a couple of knives that I made and have Todd critique them. Be prepared for this. For him to take his time and tell you what's right and what's wrong about your knife, you better be willing to actually make those changes. Because nothing is more frustrating for somebody that has that mentor style attitude than to take all their time, give the advice, share their life experiences, things they had to learn on their own, and then you turn around and make your next project and you didn't do half the things that they told you. So on that follow-up visit, that following knife show, when you bring that next knife and go, Todd, I took what you told me, I took it to heart, tell me what you think now. You're going to see a guy that's truly proud of you. You're going to look at his face and you're going to see he's proud of you. Even if you're, what he's holding is a lump of crap. But it's a lump of crap 
with a lot of improvements that he himself would have made, he's going to be really proud of you. And it's not because he gets anything out of your success. It's because he wants to see people take this art and move forward with it. This is a dying art, guys. You know I have no problem with knife makers that do everything by CNC or send out for a water jet and do the rest by hand and all the many different configurations and ways of making a knife. Case in point, it's a mid-tech knife. I freaking love it. But that art of making everything, doing everything by hand, knowing what you're doing, it's a dying art. And the best knife makers out there will take their time and help out other knife makers to teach them how to better themselves. Stan Wilson's the exact same way. He's been mentoring uh, a young man, Glenn R. Hoven, and teaching him all the things that he does, his hidden hardware and all these other amazing things. Because he says, one day, those of us that are doing these things, we're all going to be dead. And if we don't tell people, if we don't teach people, we don't share what we're doing, then it dies with us. And what good is that for the world? Now, Stel, I'll be honest with you. I don't care how many times Todd tells you how to do a knife like this. Very few people are going to execute it in the same way. I'm going to cry just a little bit when I go to send this back. And again, I have to give a, 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 a very heartfelt thank you to Alec. The degree of trust to, to tell a stranger, hey, I really want you to review that new knife I just got that was a gift that's worth more, by the way, than my first car was when I was 16. To have that level of trust and go, I want you to show the world the, the amazing beauty of this knife. That's awesome. And dude, I can't thank you enough. And, and it, I really, really do mean that. I don't do guest blade anymore. I might do it now periodically. I've had a lot of offers since I stopped doing it about a year ago. Because it is a great responsibility. I have your knife in my home. God forbid something happens. Somebody breaks in my home and steals all my knives and takes yours with them. There's the, you know, the, the scary part of shipping it back and forth. You know, I'm certainly not going to be responsible for your knife as it's being shipped back and forth. You know, once it's left my hands, that's all I can do. So, yeah, it's a scary thing to do guest blade. And that's why I really don't do it much anymore. My life has gotten hectic. I can only do videos on the weekends. So for me to say, yeah, I'll, I'll borrow your knife, but I got to have it for maybe two or three weeks in case my life got hectic on that first weekend and I couldn't get that video done. Same thing that happened here. I got sick again last weekend when this arrived. Alex, like, you know what? No worries. I don't care if it takes you a month. I really want your subscribers to see the beauty of this work. So you get better. You do what you got to do. And let me know when you make the video. That's it. Again, that's, that's that maturity level that you don't typically see out of a 13-year-old. So, uh, Alec, thank you so very much for giving me this opportunity. Out of all the years I've been doing my videos and collecting knives and even knowing Todd, I've never been able to bring out a custom. Todd and I have talked about it a lot. He's, he's tried a lot of times to get me one. And every time it's always bad timing for one of us. You know, then that knife has to go to a show with him or it's going to be a, a customer bought it and it's going to be a delivery. So we can't do that. I've been trying to get a Quaken since the very first prototype that he made. Sometimes life gets in the way. So thanks to you, I finally get a chance to do it. And I hope all you guys really enjoyed this video and got a chance to really understand the beauty of knife making at this level. To know that you could take this entire knife apart and it's just as beautiful on the inside as it is on the outside. The innovations that came from Todd's mind that go into all bodegas, the subframe lock where this entire section once unbolted, lifts out as one piece, and they can just replace the lock. The beautiful split-style pocket clip, 
with the ball bearing that makes it easier to get in and out of the pocket yet has super tight retention with those amazing standoffs that keep that clip perfectly level and that exists on them all <coughs> excuse me this is made just as perfectly not as ornate not as fancy same here every little thing that he does all those little ideas still all these years later the bodega holds up as a futuristic cool design it doesn't look aged I've had mine since October of 2012 it is still one of my personal favorite knives ever and it's going to be given to to one of my sons when I'm dead this this stuff's got to go somewhere it'll never be sold it'll never be traded it's going to be an heirloom quality piece heirloom level piece I should say this this is something entirely different and whenever I get my custom I want to make my kids actually fight over it when I'm dying. I'm going to be on my deathbed making them fight over it. That's how special it is to draw blood from your children. It'll be entertaining at the least. All right, guys, I'm out of here. Thank you, as always, for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed seeing this. And if you ever get the chance to, to, to handle any of his customs, go visit Todd at the shows. Go pick up one of his customs and feel it. Feel it for yourself and understand what that difference really is. I could talk till I'm blue in the face and try to explain it to you. But you'll never truly honestly know until you've actually picked it up and held it for yourself. There's three levels right there. And you can pick your poison. You can pick your price point. I'm going to tell you right now. If you have the means, then you need to find a way to get one of his full customs. Make it a, make it a, a, a bucket list kind of thing. You're going to do that before you die. I think it's an admirable goal.